Ni hao da jia. Wo shi su jie. Today we will look into how to enhance the security of the automotive ethernet. Before we go into the presentation, I would like to give a small introduction about myself. I work for Geely, one of the first uh, private car manufacturers uh, in China. I have two patents in the automotive industry. I have three hobbies, photography and uh, driving motorbikes and learning Chinese. Uh, uh, just I can speak jigger jigger to shao. So I worked in four countries, mainly from India. I did my master's in UK. Short time I worked in Sweden and almost five years now I'm in China. So the contents that we would look today is why we need Ethernet in the automotive industry and then we will look into uh, what are the problems with Ethernet and then we will look into the solutions that we would propose for the Ethernet. So why we need automotive Ethernet? What are the future use cases that we will come across in the later point of time? The first use case that we would come across is the self-driving cars or the autonomous cars. Uh, when we move towards the L4 and L5 autonomous driving cars, the amount of data generated by sensors and cameras is huge, almost around 2.5 terabytes of data for every kilometer is driven by the vehicle. The second use case is the timely and efficient delivery of the software updates and software controlled functions to the vehicle is one of the business use case for the automotive ethernet. Connected cars, so as the consumers want to bring their digital life into the vehicle uh, and support services like streaming, uh, gaming and bring their social life into the vehicle, we need to support high speed uh, data transfers. So here we would be uh, the look at the requirements that makes the Ethernet a viable option is high bandwidth and uh, low latency data delivery and an open architecture where the software update and software functions can be updated on the fly. No need for the consumer to leave the vehicle at the service center can be auto updated. Reducing the cabling cost by relatively uh, using the technology that is already available in the other industries. Another use case or from the architecture perspective of the vehicle, we would look at how we are moving from a traditional uh, architecture towards the centralized architecture. Traditional in the sense what I mean is the distributed architecture towards the zone based architecture and a central processing unit controlled architecture. So as we move towards the uh, service oriented architecture or centralized architecture, we want to support software upgrade and we want to support the higher security and data integrity requirements. As we support the V2X and vehicle to cloud communications, there is a essential for implementing our high data bandwidth uh, based technology. So here I want to show about uh, the Ethernet protocols that is involved uh, in a vehicle communication because Ethernet is just a two-wire communication similar to CAN. But the protocol that is involved in this communication makes this technology a high speed and low latency communication. See the seven layers of architecture in the Ethernet. Uh, we would be primarily focusing on this talk only about this part of the uh, stack. I will not be focusing on the uh, time sensitive networks and I will not be focusing on the uh, AVB protocol because they are still in drafting phase. Uh, I want to look at the threats and the countermeasures that needs to be implemented on the TCP and UDP and IP protocol and some IP. Here I will not look into the HTTP or HTTPS and transport layer security or WebSocket uh, uh, security threats and countermeasures because this does not apply to the uh, really to the vehicle environment. This applies only to the vehicle to the uh, cloud or to the other devices coming. So here I want to show about the time sensitive network protocols that are involved within the Ethernet. Uh, emphasis on the qualities of the time sensitive network uh, synchronization, reliability 
latency and the re, uh, resource management. We want to move from a best effort uh, communication to a time deterministic low latency based communication. And uh, here we have marked the automotive in vehicle profile for the ethernet that would be published later at the end of this year or the next year. This would comprise all the suite of protocols that uh, needs to be implemented to realize the uh, time sensitive network in the automotive. Uh, what are the security assets that is available in the car? So first, uh, this is the table that I would like to show for establishing what are the security assets in the car. Uh, cryptographic materials, configuration data, firmwares, communication messages, diagnostics, debuggers and security logs and user data. With the Ethernet, we will focus only on the communication messages and diagnostics. So many people ask me, we need to consider only the integrity and availability for the uh, communication messages. Why we need to authenticate the messages? So the answer for that is, Every time when we need to authenticate a ECU, we cannot actually authenticate the ECU every uh, for a signal based communication. So it is much better to authenticate a message than authenticating the ECU that is participating in the communication. So we look at the authenticity as a property for uh, uh, communication messages and diagnostics. Uh, here I want to state some of the problems that has been reported earlier. Uh, in the TCP IP stack of automotive implementation. This research was done approximately in 2018. Results of the study is shown here. One of the main problems that comes with Ethernet implementation is the stack implementation. Uh, though TCP IP is around for almost 30 years now, uh, there are multiple vulnerabilities still discovered in the TCP IP implementation because when the TCP IP was earlier designed, it was not designed to be secure, it was designed to be making a best effort to uh, deliver the messages from our sender to the receiver. There are some open source implementations uh, that are very stable and secure, but in the automotive environment, this stack implementation or open source implementations cannot be directly used uh, because of the copy left restrictions. So actually we cannot use the um, TCP IP that is available in the open source. Uh, we need to develop in-house, both tier ones and OEMs need to develop by themselves to implement this uh, TCP, UDP or IP implementations. So this brings the problem of uh, developers missing the important fixes that has been done in the open source because they cannot put the complete implementation. And we face hardware limitations and vulnerabilities and weakness uh, of the processors and trans receivers. As I said earlier, the automotive specific implementations like AVB and TSN is not fully tested for the automotive security. Most of the hacks or remote hacks that happened in the vehicle is because of the open TCP ports left for by the uh, tier ones and OEMs to um, to do the diagnostics or uh, update. When we implement the TCP, we need to make sure that there are no open ports left in our implementation. And uh, we need to focus on the inherent vulnerabilities of ICMP protocol and other protocols. And we need to make sure that we implement partially these protocols and we try to avoid those implementation mistakes to carry over into this domain. And another attack that is easily possible is ARP poisoning or man in the middle attack. And uh, this can be overcome by using the static ARP implementations or address resolution protocol implementations. In the vehicle environment, the participating ECUs don't change very often. Static ARP implementation should work in the vehicle normally. And uh, TCP is very prone to the denial of service attacks because of how easy it is to guess the sequence number of the de uh, next data packets and uh, how easily we can hijack a TCP session. So we need to make sure that we encrypt the sequence numbers or cryptographic using the cryptographic signatures or using VPN 
or ipsec to protect the messages and uh, in some ip it is very easy to spoof the messages that is coming over some ip so instead of using some ip we can propose to use uh, secure real time protocol and uh, multimedia internet keying protocol we need to establish what we want to protect before we go into uh, protecting uh, uh, the elements of the communication message so we want to make sure that we implement the message confidentiality message integrity and message freshness and message authenticity and availability very basic uh, security requirements applies for all the uh, communication uh, networks uh, but the implementation on the ethernet uh, can be made more viable because of the high uh, efficient and highly uh, computational power that is available to us now i want to show what are the security solutions that can be put uh, to solve the problems of uh, or the security problems of Ethernet. Uh, the first one is the controller authentication, encrypted communication, gateway firewalls, and we can use uh, secure onboard communication, device authentication, transport layer security, IPsec, and packet filtering. Explain more about controller authentication. Every ECU participating in a high security and a high data integrity environment will be distributed with a, a ECU specific public key certificate and when they want to start the communication after a sleep wake up or a KL30 reset it is expected to present their certificate to the gateway ECUs and the gateway ECUs will verify the public, uh, public uh, key certificate using the vehicle OEMs public key that is stored in the gateway. After the controller is authenticated, uh, it can make the uh, security critical communication on the bus. First step is the ECUs are given a controller specific certificate. These certificates are initially signed by the vehicle OEM private key and they need to present this certificate every time when they want to make communication on the bus or every time when the communication or network wake up happens and then the gateway will verify verify the ECUs using the public key of the OEM. In encrypted communication, the controllers can distribute a symmetrical encryption key to the controllers and these controllers can use this symmetric key to encrypt their payload and distribute on the bus. This is kind of encrypted communication, but we can realize this only for some confidential information that I sent on the bus. For message authentication by adding a MAC along with this encrypted message. Uh, so a fully composed message or an Ethernet message would look like destination address and a source address and then uh, crypto uh, encrypted message attached with the message authentication code. This symmetric key can be replaced periodically, uh, generating onboard symmetric keys and distributing periodically to the participating ECUs. Gateway firewalls and policies and uh, requirements for the gateway firewalls. The gateway firewall requirement for it is to valid and authentic ECUs must be able to send messages on the bus. And uh, controllers from lower networks uh, cannot be or should not be able to send message to the security and uh, high data integrity subnets. And we can implement uh, intrusion detection and uh, prevention systems on the gateway because on Ethernet, that one of, it's one of the functions is of the firewall is to implement IDPS. Uh, so the policies for IDPS would be to detect the attack, protect the onboard and onboard communications uh, in case of uh, detect, uh, attack has been detected. One of the policies is to prevent an attack from happening in the first place and then protect from attack and then recover from attack. This becomes the incident response policies needs to be set in the gateway firewall. Authentication of the OBD devices that is connects to the vehicle in forest shop and diagnostic services and also in the uh, uh, end of the line production and other things. Trusted devices will be present, uh, will be distributed with the vehicle OEM trusted certificates and every time when they connect to the vehicle, this needs to present a 
of the device and will be verified with the public key of the OEM and when the user connects their uh, phones or personal devices or laptops to the vehicle it should be restricted to access only the multimedia subnet and they cannot access the high uh, safety or security buses in the vehicle. So a little bit about using the transport layer security and uh, uh, protecting the TCP messages that is sent on the bus. Uh, a controller must be authenticated before it can participate in uh, bus communication and encrypted communication for confidential information and SECOSI for authenticating uh, signal based communications that happen on the vehicle. At the lower level or at the data layer, we would like to have a packet filtering. Networks with different security zones can be realized by using the virtual LAN IDs. Here you can see that uh, external networks with low security requirements from the vehicle perspective are separated from the internal network with the high security and safety requirements by using the VLAN tag ID. This VLAN tag ID can uh, separate the packets that is specific to the subnets. ECUs would be prevented from sending the messages for different VLAN tag ID that are not authorized to send. So in this way we can protect this uh, at the MAC level about this one. Uh, we have looked into why we need automotive Ethernet and we have looked also into the problems of implementing Ethernet in an auto automotive environment. I want to review the uh, what are the security solutions that we can put into automotive Ethernet. As we discussed, we can put the controller authentication, we can use encrypted communication, gateway firewalls and SECOSI for signal based communication, device authentication for the diagnostics and uh, other devices that connects to the vehicle, transport layer security and D DTLS for protecting the transport layer datagram and uh, VLAN and IPsec for protecting the network layer and packet filtering for uh, protecting the data layer. With this, I would end my presentation here and thank you everyone for listening to me. Okay, so uh, with this, I end my presentation. If you have any questions, we can discuss later. Thank you very much for your time. Sisya Rajya.